Hey everyone, happy Friday for those of you that have the weekend off and for some of our viewers that are just starting their week, we hope you have a great weekend at work. We are here with our final video of the week to talk about lattice semiconductor and applied materials. This one's gonna be a brief video, just a quick catch up for both of these companies. We still need to work on our cybersecurity manual and get that out to you as soon as possible. So we're cutting this one a little short so we can get back to work on that. Yeah, that's right. And of course, we haven't even talked about our favorite software stocks. Sorry, folks, this is the busiest earning season of the year for us here because we like to look at all of the initial guidance for the upcoming year from all these companies. But just a little preview of what you can catch later on the show and over on our Discord channel, our favorite software analytics company, Dynatrace, going to be talking about Cloudflare, the Monday.com, which reported on Monday morning this past week. The big one last night, the Trade Desk, a huge 20% jump after hours, a lot of good stuff indicating good things coming for the cloud and software space in general in 2024. It's been a tough few years, but software's back. Bear market is over. Casey, folks want to know about one of your favorites though, Lattice Semiconductor, Ugly Quarter. The stock is up on the year anyways. What is going on? Yeah, let's go over the high level numbers here really quickly for Lattice, just to get a picture of what is going on in this company. So full year revenue grew 12% compared to 2022. Q4 2023, which is the quarter they just reported, decreased 3% year over year and 11% sequentially. And you can see in the comments by CEO James Anderson, he reiterated the fact that in the industrial and automotive market, Although they grew year over year, they declined sequentially because of that soft demand around those end markets as inventory was reduced by their customers. And then again, in the communications and computing, revenue declined sequentially and growth in data center computing was offset by that weaker in wired and wireless telecommunications. Ultimately, customers are trying to burn through those inventories. Lattice is attempting to correct their inventory level shipments to their customers as well. So this is just more inventory correction story. Why the optimism at this point? Because it looks in keeping with a lot of Lattice's peers in the industrial and automotive chip space. We're going to be looking at more downturn for the duration of at least the first half of 2024. Yes, absolutely. The CEO and CFO both reiterated the first quarter of 2024 is going to be ugly, but they do expect the second half of 2024 to improve as end market conditions and as end customer inventory levels normalize. So a very similar story to what we've been seeing throughout all of these companies as the inventory levels normalize at the end market we'll start seeing more normal shipments post-pandemic. And Lattice is very well poised for this. They talked again about their portfolio expansion. They have a lot of new products. They have the most products they ever have had in their history. Yeah, and maybe one other reason for optimism. Again, uh, this was a question over on the brand new Discord channel. You did some sleuth work. There's a really big new application for Lattice's FPGAs. Interestingly enough, that customer not adopting the latest and greatest chips from Lattice. So room for improvement? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for Carol who pointed this out in our Discord channel. Take a look at this question on the earnings call. CEO James Anderson was asked about a new high profile VR and AR headset. And he was asked if that manufacturer was going to be using the Nexus chip versus an ICE-40. And you can take a look at this breakdown from iFixit for the Apple Vision Pro. You can see that the lattice semiconductor chip is highlighted there and they utilize the ICE-40, not the latest Nexus chip from Lattice. Even Apple is not utilizing the latest and greatest chip. So there's room for growth there at Lattice. 
So I guess end of story here. Yeah, ugly first half of 2024, but still a favorite stock for the long term, Casey? Yeah, absolutely. Gross profit margin still at 70% for this last quarter. They have fantastic balance sheets, awesome product lineup, and a great management team. I'm still a fan of Lattice and my conductor. Okay, let's talk about one of your favorites, Nick, and one we have owned since 2018, Applied Materials. Yeah, I, I had to look. I think e even older than that was our first real nibble. Going on year seven, at least with Applied Materials, almost 500% total return on our initial investment anyways. A fabulous company in the wafer fab equipment space. ASML gets all the attention, but... Uh, you can't separate these two. And in fact, you can't separate any of these companies in, especially the Fab Five, highly collaborative businesses to help get the equipment out to make semiconductors. If you're an actual chip maker, most of the tech and the IP starts with and owned by companies like Applied Materials, ASML, and then of course, LAM Research, which we started buying late last year, Tokyo Electron and KLA Core routing out the, the Fab Five. This was a great quarter, better than expected. And the Q2 fiscal 2024, that's the quarter that will end in March next month, also better than expected, sent the stock up another 10% after hours the Thursday. Really good stuff here. But you might be looking at the numbers that you see in the headlines and thinking, I don't get it. Revenue in the last quarter was flat year over year at just over 6.5 billion. And the outlook for the March quarter at the midpoint, flat, maybe even down slightly, unless they come in again at the high end of expectations. So at best, we're looking at mid single digit percentage year over year growth at best. What gives, why, why in the world would this stock be once again, hitting new all time highs? And the answer, Casey, is we are in a slump the last couple of years, uh, a lot of chip manufacturers cutting back on their equipment purchases. Applied Materials outperformed last year in fiscal year 2023 by pivoting their portfolio to ICAPs, IoT, communications, automotive, power, and sensors, especially those last three. Lots of work going into next-gen industrial and power and sensor chips for automotive, for industrial automation, and so on. So they outperformed thanks to ICAPs. And now this year, they're gearing up for those next-gen chips for, the, of course, the PC and smartphone market, but especially AI. Just read and hear accelerated computing whenever you hear that word AI. Essentially, what's going on here is more flattish looking growth, but applied materials is definitely signaling the next bull market for wafer fab equipment is right around the corner. We talked about LAM research recently, another one of our favorites in the B Fab Five wafer fab equipment companies. And LAM has historically been a big player in the memory market. And in that's becoming more and more of a discussion now with this high bandwidth memory. In another video, we'll talk more about this regarding applied materials versus LAM research in this space. But let's talk about applied global services. That's the software subscription and equipment services segment. That grew 8% last quarter and is on pace for low teens percent growth this year. It's a giant in software-based investment in the semiconductor industry. There has been a lot of discussion this year regarding ASML's high in a EUV machine. Does Applied Materials have any collaboration and partnership with ASML going forward? Yeah, for sure. And maybe one more thing, Casey, on that AGS, Applied Global Services, $6 billion annualized run rate revenue. This is about one quarter of their business. So if you're looking for a long kind of steady growth bet in the semiconductor world applied as a fantastic proxy for the, for the whole industry overall, thanks to that AGS segment in particular. But yeah, high NAEUV, lots of talk on that. ASML stock up big this year on optimism that high NAEUV is on the cusp of widespread adoption. 
And we're excited about that too. We own ASML stock, more than happy to keep holding it. But we're a little concerned about some hype surrounding that. And there was a question about this on the last earnings call. Again, I think, Casey, this probably deserves its own video at some point in the next couple of months discussing this. But there seems to be some apprehension about full-blown widespread adoption of high NA. Part of it, it isn't, it's not just the expense of the machine itself. It's not the 300 to $400 million price tag per machine. But, you know, the things have been invented, they've been built, but you have to now, if you're a chip maker, you have to figure out how to actually use it. And that costs money too. And if you don't get it right, if you don't have a usable chip lineup as a result of that process, you've wasted a lot of time and a lot of money. So we think what doesn't get a lot of attention is again, like you said, Casey, applied materials, very complementary business with ASML. For example, that Sculpta machine we talked about last March that they kind of pulled some of the curtain away from so people could get a better look at it almost a year ago, helping with multi-patterning steps to help extend the usefulness of the previous generation UV machines from ASML. And so I think a lot of attention going towards the high NA UV saying, this is the next generation of chips going to be all based on this technology, but we're not so sure. So what we're looking at over the next five years as being more of the growth driver and propelling chip technology forward is materials, patterning, and packaging technology. Three things that applied materials is really going to excel in and uh, we think get a lot of profitable growth from. So again, we probably need to delve into this in more detail in coming videos. I guess stay tuned, right? Applied materials versus ASML and applied materials versus LAM, two separate videos. Is that, I don't know, maybe not a fair comparison, but there you go. All right. I think that's a wrap on videos this week. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. We'll have much more coming your way next week. And just a reminder, if you would like to join the membership here on YouTube or on Kofi, we have much more discussion about all kinds of things over on our Discord channel, and we're able to get much more information out on that and answer questions much more readily there. So please, if you're interested in that, it's just five bucks a month and you can get access to all of that information. Otherwise, please subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a lot. And we will see you again soon at Chipstock Investor.